Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. It's time to let go of negative thinking, understand why you do what you do, and stop the self-sabotage with your host, Fran Excel. Welcome to the show. As always, it's Fran Excel, your resident subconscious success mentor, helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. If you want to stop sabotaging your own success and let go of the stress, then you are in the right place, my friend. Make sure you download your free stressed to success guided meditation at bit.ly forward slash stressed to success as my little gift to you for being here. Please do subscribe, share, review. It really, really helps people that need to hear this message find us. And I so appreciate it. In the show notes, you will also find details of how you can work with me and where you can get your mitts on my meditations, products, and printables. You can also find it through the link in my bio on Instagram, which is my second favorite place to hang out. So please do come join me over there at I'm Fran Excel. Tag me in your takeaways, slide into my DMs. I am here for it. So that is the formalities over my love. So let's jump into the content. I am so excited because I have got the wonderful Melanie Moore with me today. Melanie is the UK's leading vision board expert and award-winning coach. She inspires her clients to tap into their big vision and gives them the mindset tools to change the trajectory of their lives. She helps people at crossroads in their lives to get clear on their big vision, then to actually commit to this vision by taking bold action towards their goals and creating their dream life. She is the host of Big Vision TV and the creator of Transformational Neural Technique, a unique process that clears the past, which then clears the path so that lasting transformation can happen. Melanie is on a mission to help millions of people to dream bigger, think bigger and act bigger. So it's easy to see why I've got her on the show. Oh, that <laughs> makes me sound so professional, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? Just. I know. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted to bring Melanie on is because tapping and EFT is something that I've talked about in previous episodes and always been like, I'm not the expert. I use it myself take from it what you will, go do your own research. So I wanted to bring Melanie on to kind of really give you a bit more of a rounded idea of how we can use this incredible tool. I use it all the time. I joined Melanie's uh, membership to keep me accountable for using it because it's a tool that is just incredible. The first time I ever used EFT, I remember I bawled my eyes out and had no idea where this bubble of emotion came from. So what I wanted to do was kind of go through with Melanie and teach you a little bit more. So lovely Melanie. And she is, by the way, one of the loveliest people on the internet. So go follow her. So what is EFT? Tell us. Right. So firstly, thank you so much for having me. Absolute pleasure and an honor. Um, so EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. And um, as you've just described, um, your first experience, it freed up a load of emotions that you'd had trapped in your body in um, an emotional release in tears. And it often happens the first time you do it. Um, because we're human beings, at any one time, you can tell me, I can say, Fran, how are you feeling right now? And you could probably pretty much pinpoint, yeah, I'm feeling content or I'm feeling um, hopeful, I'm feeling a bit anxious or worried or overwhelmed, scared or joyful, optimistic. You know, there is a whole myriad of emotions that control us at any one time. It's actually not control, that's the wrong word, but that we can identify with any one time. And we go through a whole raft of these all through the day. And what I want people to do is to become really aware of how their emotions are actually triggered by the thoughts that they're thinking. Mm -hmm. So um, the emotion is just a result of, there's a little dialogue that's going in, on in your head. And I'm, you know, I've really, I've studied this for so long. I, I qualified as an EFT practitioner 10 years ago, because at the time I was working with women who were trying to get pregnant. I was a holistic therapist doing reflexology and Reiki. And for me, it was a tool that I bought in to help women calm their nerves before giving birth, to help them with the emotions of getting pregnant in the first place. It was just such an amazing tool to complement my business at that time. Now, um, on the side, I was also doing vision board workshops. 
um, with, with my client base, I, because I was really into the law of attraction, manifesting and, 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 you know, personal development. And so on the side, I did these vision board workshops as well. So as the years have progressed in my career, the tapping has been a constant throughout. I've tapped for myself through my ups and downs in my own personal life because it was just wonderful. I use it for physical symptoms. Just a very quick side note. I very first came across EFT when I was trying to find something to manage my hay fever symptoms. You, you uh. just suffer terribly from hay fever. And then I found this video because I'd already heard tapping mentioned at the time. My ex-husband had had some sessions to stop smoking with tapping. And then I saw that tapping could be used for allergies. And I thought, what? So I thought, you know, let's give it a go. And here's me sneezing. My eyes are streaming. Two rounds of tapping. My symptoms had just gone. I thought, this is just weird. Oh. So um, I then, of course, I then had to train to become an EFT practitioner. And since then, I've literally discovered you can use it on anything so yeah looking forward to going deeper into this topic i love that i did not i struggle really really badly with hay fever so that is interesting i had not really interesting migraines migraines as well one of um, it's actually an old youtube channel i've got i must redo it for my new channel one of my most popular videos on my old channel was tapping to get rid of a migraine comments people just said oh my god migraine's gone it's just disappeared it's amazing because you can tap on physical pain as well. It is um, most, but most people who come across it, um, they, it's a great tool for combating stress and anxiety and overwhelm just to get you to a place of calm. It's just like, you know, five minutes and you can literally go from frazzled, stressed and anxious to calm in just five minutes. And I think most people that's how they discover EFT and it works brilliantly but I've kind of wanted to see where else can I take EFT and, you know, and all the other possibilities with it. So yeah, I, I love it. Oh, I love it. So I have talked about it a little bit in um, a podcast episode before and tried to describe kind of what you do and where mm-hmm. you do it. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, it's often described as a cross between acupuncture, but without the needles and instead of the needles use your fingertips and we are simulating the acupressure points because it is linked to traditional Chinese medicine, which is obviously where acupuncture comes from. But so it's like a cross between acupuncture without the needles and modern day psychology. And, um, but as instead, but sorry, but with traditional psychology, it's talking about the problem endlessly. Often it's circling the drain. It's not really getting resolution because you're just revisiting the past and, And, you know, and yes, there is a place for talking therapies, but the way that EFT works, it brings up the problem to the surface. Mm -hmm. In traditional EFT, there's a bit of a sandwich. We call it the triple layer sandwich. We address the problem and this is where the emotion comes up. We bring it up and out to the surface. Um, Because some people say, why are you focusing on those negative statements? We're not, we're just, um, it's like, if you're going to decorate, you don't just slap paint on top of wallpaper you prepare the surface first, you get all the yeah. rubbish off first. So you're bringing all the old stories, the problem, you're addressing the problem, you're honoring the pain or whatever is you're feeling, you're bringing it up to the surface. The next bit is tapping on letting it go, releasing it, that's when the freedom comes in. And then the third bit is the bringing in the positive affirmations, bringing in what you want, the positivity, the, the how I want to feel instead. So it's like a, a triple layer so we address we release and then we um we call in what we want so um so that's kind of how it works and we tap on these points mostly on our face and our upper body and and i think this is the bit that for most people when they're coming across it it looks bonkers it looks completely and utterly crazy yeah. you feel even weirder doing it particularly when you're tapping under your armpit and the top yeah. of your head <laughs> I was like, I'm in the right place. I never know. <laughs> I know. And, and you do feel completely ridiculous doing it, but it works. It really does. And I've seen evidence of it over and over again. Firstly, for myself, the amazing things I saw in my own life. My children, my goodness, I've been tapping with them since they were tiny. But then I'm just so, if there's nothing else, I'm just 
so pleased that they've got it a tool to use throughout their whole lives and and we've used it for all sorts of things so it's great for children um it's good for everyone for everything yeah yeah and it's 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 one of those isn't it it's I, i'm always saying to people the, the mind is a huge piece of the puzzle but you've got to get the body on board because the mind mm. and the body are so interconnected and sometimes if the talking therapies aren't working um and like you said and you feel like you're circling the drain sometimes doing these sorts of things where it's really involving the body is that thing that can take you over the line to create that freedom and to to release the, the triggers and, and things like that but I think one of the weirdest things for it when I first found it was the wording yeah and it's the the way that it, and sometimes it can be difficult to get into something because you're like I don't understand how how the wording's important so can you talk a little bit mm. about that well I'm often known as the language police and <laughs> I literally pay attention to every word that everybody says words have so much power mm -hmm. they have their own vibrational frequency and this is something I've actually um, got more into I was already doing it but I didn't realize the link between the power of your words and tapping with them as well because you know language and words and thoughts they're literally they're with us 24 7 and it's those words and it's those thoughts that trigger the way we're feeling Firstly, through the thoughts that we're thinking, they're usually the biggest trigger. It's what's going on in our head. Mm -hmm. Then it's the words that we're speaking. So obviously when we're tapping and speaking those words, that's when with a round of tapping with me, I can really help to shift your state from the, the negative or the, the less positive emotions, moving you up the emotional scale to a place of optimism and you know motivation and when your vibration is up here you're going to take action from that place as well so so the words are so important and so one thing she may be referring to is words like I deeply and completely love and accept myself yep it's one of the kind of the core phrases of tapping or I deeply and completely love and forgive yeah love and forgive myself love and accept myself love and honor myself because ultimately the frequency of love is the highest one of all mm. and usually the words we say we're often berating ourselves or we're talking badly of ourselves when we're, we're not very nice to ourselves usually when we when we speak and we say oh even silly things with trip off the tongue I'm such an idiot I'm always late I'm this I'm that I am is so powerful and the words that you say you know I've got I have it as a post-it note as a reminder on my desk whatever follows the words I am will come looking for you yeah and if you oh, say I love that yeah yes. I, I wish that was mine it was actually I think it's Joel Osteen I was listening to a <laughs> podcast with him at Oprah and as soon as I heard that I was like ching I get it and I have to have that as a reminder to be really conscious and mindful of the words I say after I am so sometimes because we do we're human beings and we say these things but in a round of tapping, we're addressing that, that even though I'm feeling anxious or worried, I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. I'm loving it anyway. I'm loving the fact that I'm um, feeling worried or anxious because it's just a part of who I am. I'm loving all the parts of me. And mm. it's such an important phrase. And I know some people really, really struggle with that when it comes to self-esteem, self-worth whether they believe in themselves or not, they really struggle with that. So if you can't say love and honor myself, I just say, even though I'm feeling this, it's okay. And I'm, and you know, and sometimes with children, children, you know, you say, oh, do I use love and accept? Yeah, get them used to it quite early, but you can say, even though I'm this, I'm a good girl anyway. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, just really kind words to say to yourself. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's the place we want to get to, that place of real, love for ourselves because when we really love and accept ourselves we're going to radiate that out into the world mm -hmm. people are going to feel that energy because that's the energy that you know, gosh imagine if we all loved and accept ourselves and we all sent that love out into the world this world would be really really different right now because no, right, right now <laughs> right now people are radiating fear and worry and anxiety and it's just a toxic pot out there at the moment. So yeah, I'm all for everyone loving themselves a little bit more. Because yeah. 
Yeah, and it's one of those things. It's it's something, and and people often when I talk about how I used to be, people are like, I don't believe you, because <laughs> I always refer to myself as I was a previous Eeyore on a bad day. I was probably one of the most <laughs> negative people that you could come across. I catastrophized everything. I struggled really badly with anxiety, and if you'd asked me what I even liked about myself, let alone loved, I would have really really struggled to give you anything. Honestly, it was one of those things. And the the things that I want people to understand is that it is possible to deeply and completely love and accept yourself. Even from where, whatever starting point you're at right now, that is a possibility for you. Yeah. So why does it work? Why does it work? Okay. So this is the bit where, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the classic question. Yeah. Now it works through a couple of um, it's, it's a multi pronged attack on your brain attack. That's a bit of a negative. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's the rewiring of the yeah. brain because through the tapping of the acupressure points, these are actually linked to the meridians, meridian system in the body. It's that energy system. So we would call it the meridian system. Um, it's also called as the chi, the life force prana it's called um it's the life force in your body and oh, i've got goosebumps as i say this um mm. that's a sign when you have when you say say something you get goosebumps it's often a sign that you're speaking the truth or yeah. you know you're connected with your higher power um it is this energy system that flows through our body and this is why you know traditional chinese medicine it's even accepted within the nhs that yeah. acupuncture is accepted but obviously we're not going to be poking needles into ourselves because we're not qualified acupuncturists but we are stimulating these points so already it's um, working on a very ancient um, proven medical system as we are doing the tapping for the stimulation but the added layer of the words and the language is when we literally start to rewire our brain Mm. now when you know I add my other bit of the visualization this is when I kind of developed my my TNT process transformational neural technique because we're transforming our neural pathways through the action of the tapping through the speaking of the words but all through through the envisioning as well now each one of those alone has enormous benefits Mm -hmm. you know people go and have an acupuncture session on its own have enormous benefits people can just do affirmations in front of the mirror and will see great benefits they'll feel good and people you know sports people lots of people just do visualization and will have great benefits each one of those things done separately and there are people who will just teach people how to do those things separately you know stand in front of the mirror and chant affirmations to yourself lovely fantastic bounce on your rebounder and just do affirmations brilliant and I do those things but also um the visualization there are are, you know Wayne Rooney's talked about it um that you just visualize the outcome that you want so powerful but what I've done is brought all three together the tapping the visualization and the language to turn this into kind of my own process so um that's kind of how it works it's a triple pronged approach to rewire your brain in a really really powerful way each one of those individually will rewire your brain but Um, the three of them together is like supercharging the benefits of the others does that make sense yeah absolutely yeah I mean visualization and and all of these different things are things that that I teach as well and and really want people to get on board with because I think particularly for for my audience so many people I call them woo curious it's that whole idea of like I really really am intrigued by this because I see other people getting results but I don't really have the motivation to do it because I don't get why it works which is why I always ask people kind of like why does this work like what's a little bit of the science behind it because I also encourage everyone curiosity is one of my core values it means I'm completely open-minded to all of these different things and I think it's so important to have as much knowledge as you can, but to then take action and actually just see. Sometimes you don't need all the information to give Mm. something a try, but visualization is one of the, it's just an incredible, incredible tool. So all three together, I can imagine is pretty darn powerful. Oh, it really is. And it's, 
it's when I've kind of unraveled things in my own life, when I've thought about things that I've manifested, when things that I've had goals and particular things that I've wanted always started with a vision. That's why I love vision boards. That's mm-hmm. why I'm so kind of massively really into, you know, helping people to craft a vision for their own lives. But then mm-hmm. it's what you do after that as well. The, the, the vision, you know, anyone can create a vision board, you know, people are doing them all the time, but it's the action afterwards. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes we're so resistant to taking action. And this is the bit that it's my personal favorite to get people to take action through. Sometimes we've got to tap away those old stories, those limiting beliefs. Um, so I, I've just created a new video for the members community, which I think is landing today. I had quite a few people in the group saying, oh gosh, I start things, but I don't finish them. Don't finish them. I'm not, yeah. I'm not a finisher just an old story you've told yourself so I thought okay I'll create a tapping video for that so there's a new tapping video to help you let go of that old story I don't see things through to the end um and the new story is I'm a finisher I see things to the end and it's just we just have to tell ourselves a story of what we want so um so yeah so that's just an example of how you can literally tap on anything yeah yeah no I love it and when we go back to, to acupuncture I can remember I had a um, really bad problem with my back, with my sac- sac- can't ever say it, sacro- sacroiliac joint. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I ha- was in so much pain. Nothing was working. I had an injection in my back under general anesthetic, all these things. Nothing worked. And I went for one acupuncture session. Mm-hmm. And within a couple of days, that pain was gone. And that yeah, was one incredible. of the things that also got me into EFT as well. I was already um, a little bit into it and, and intrigued by it, but that was like, I'm sold. This, this meridian points and looking at looking at your chakra system and all of that stuff that before, because of the packaging of it, I probably would have dismissed a little bit. Mm. But with this, because this is a few years ago now, like this is where the curiosity piece of the puzzle comes in. It's like, just give something a go because all these stories that we tell ourselves that hold ourselves back whether they are from a childhood trauma whether it is um, a strategy that has worked for us at some point in the past we need to release it somehow and usually that's getting the body on board with the brain at the same time and I just think tapping is just such a brilliant way of doing that and actually processing your emotions in in the moment I talk a lot about being able to regulate your emotions and regulate your nervous system and it's a brilliant way to do that Mm. So yeah. what's your what's your favorite thing about tapping? Like if you found someone in the street and they were just like, I don't get it. I'm not I'm not for it. Like, what would you say to them? <laughs> sometimes it is sometimes you've just got to get people on board to just give it a go. And um, and and sometimes I feel like a bit of a magician, actually. I say, look, just I remember doing my brother years ago and he was quite skeptical. It's like, yeah. And he had a really, um, I think he had an issue with his contact lens and hay fever. So it was a double prong thing is I was really bothering him. So I said, let's just tap that away. And he's, like, oh, he's just rolling his eyes at me. He's like, go on then. And so I said, <laughs> first of all, okay, <laughs> rate out of 10, how uncomfortable, how irritating. He's like, it's really, really irritating me. It's like about nine out of 10. Okay. So we do a round of tapping. First, we acknowledge my eyes really irritated. Um, it's watering, it's sore, it's itchy, da, 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 da. Cause you can remember doing physical things. Mm-hmm. So we tapped on that. And then we thought, I'm letting go of the irritation. I'm letting go of the itchiness. I'm letting go of the, the watery sensation. I'm releasing that now. Mm-hmm. And then we did a final round of tapping on my eyes are feeling perfect. I'm feeling perfect. All is well. My eyes are really, you know, back to normal I can see clearly the itch you know I'm feeling really good now so we did do that five maybe ten minutes the end of it said how's your eye he goes I don't know what you've just done you're a witch he said it's gone I'm fine (laughs) so you know that's um you know I could I I could give you a hundred examples I once worked in a um I was working I was based in a clinic and it was adjoined to a hair salon and the head stylist said oh now come here a sec have you got a minute I was between sessions and the lady was a chain smoker and he was literally having a hard time this woman literally she was a chain smoker he said could you do some tapping to sort her out because um yes you can use it for cravings you can and there are some EFT practitioners I'm not one of those who help people with addictions and smoking but I know how it works I've just chosen not to specialize in that area so I did one round of tapping with her to eliminate the craving, to release the belief that she needed the cigarette. And we just tapped on, um, I feel great. 
I don't need it anymore. I feel fine. She sat the rest of her three-hour appointment, not wanting a cigarette, kept checking. Are you okay? She goes, I don't want a fag. I don't want one. I'm fine. <laughs> what is that for me? Whether or not she continued to give up smoking permanently, I'll never know. But it's, mm. it's amazing. You know, again, just instant results. Yeah. I love it. I love all of these different modalities. It's why I've, I've gone down the route of qualifying in so many different things. EFT yeah. is on my list because it's one of those, <laughs> like, even though I do it myself yeah. until, until like I qualified to do it. And this is, this comes back to, again, this is about old programs that are running. Yeah. I don't want to teach people it so mm-hmm. I can, I can help people do it. So follow this video and I will yeah. send them a video of somebody else doing it. Yeah. And it's about releasing all those old stories and releasing those patterns. So that's probably something I need to tap on as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And there's so many modalities. So another one that's on my list is kinesiology. Oh yes. I love that. But we can actually, um, I do that through pendulum work. Yeah, yeah. And that's the most basic form of kinesiology. The sway sway technique and even the the finger locking thing. Yep. So they're the most simple. You can't see us now. We're (laughs) doing no no no. (laughs) No, exactly. And there are there are so many healing modalities out Mm. there, but the important thing is just to really um master your emotions, to acknowledge how you're feeling, but Mm. also acknowledging the story that you're telling yourself as well that is the big thing you know what's the story you know is it true because it's yeah often it's a story that you know what identities what are labels that you put on yourself clumsy I'm always late remember what I said whatever you say after I am will come looking for you yeah um what this old stories that you've been telling yourself for years where did that come from and it probably you can trace it back to an incident in childhood Ways. where somebody said that to you mm. and you took it on board as an actual belief but there are so many things we can literally go back undo and think do you know what I'm going to create what I do want instead I'm going to tell myself a story of mm. what I want to be true of you know as you, you said you, you you've changed so much you've become a positive person Fran and um, I was saying, I used to worry about everything. Again, worst case scenario, um, I planned funerals in my head, you know, for mm-hmm. just, just, you know, my own and just stupid, you know, just worrying about all sorts of things. But that is just not me anymore. That has gone, that worrier. I do not, I can honestly say night worrying has 99% been eliminated in my life. Of course, yes, things come up and, but I acknowledge it for, yeah, yeah it's just not just going to let that go now because worrying is like praying for something you don't want yeah so exactly well yeah you it's focused on what you do want yeah <laughs> and it's what do I have control over I've got a few episodes specifically on overthinking and worrying because it was something I was exactly the same I would catastrophize everything if my husband was three minutes late he yeah. had died in a car crash I was know. exactly the same yeah. And it's the whole, like, it's those what ifs getting caught up in those what ifs. Well, what if this happens? And you're, you're essentially future tripping. You're, you're creating an existence that hasn't happened yet. So mm-hmm. it's what's in front of you that you've actually got control over. And if you are doing that, that's a great time to start tapping. And what you do have control is how you're feeling right now as well. Yeah. If you're feeling, you know, any way, shape or form less than calm or content, you can shift that in literally five minutes. Obviously, the further down you go, this is why I've, it's really important to catch yourself before you can spiral down. And, you know, I have bad days. Sometimes it can go on to a couple of days, but I've literally realized if I'm in a funk for more than two days, it's literally, okay, it's time to snap out this now. And, um, but I know I personally will not go beyond two days and, and, and I will literally binge on Netflix and I will just allow myself to sit with that. Like, okay, yeah. enough's enough now. I'm going to get back out of this little funk and I can snap myself out of it. But that's the thing. The longer we go down this, um, I think it's Joe Dispenza. He puts it so beautifully that, um, you know, what can then start off as a mood, I'm in a mood, yeah. can then become your um, a disposition. Then it can become your um, personality trait. It, um, you know, I much better more eloquently than that but then it just becomes your identity but really if you can catch it from a mood you can then shift it but then longer you know because if you have a cranky day but then you leave that 20 years time you're just a cranky person yeah, <laughs> you don't want to be yeah, a cranky person yeah. um but we can shift that as the, the sooner we realize that that we do have total 
control over our emotions and the words we say to ourselves. And for me, I know there are great tools out there and tapping isn't for everyone. Um, but for me, it really is the quickest way to um, shift yourself through your speech. Um, we add it with the physical action of the tapping, the stimulation of the meridian points and through the speaking into existence of what it is we want. Mm. Yeah, no, I absolutely love it. And it, it's so true. Like we talk about all these different modalities that there are and it's finding that one that's going to work for you. The one that you kind of resonate with, the one that you're willing to give a go, use that curiosity and be like, I'm going to try this and see how I feel um, mm. without any attachment to the outcome and without the judgment. And those are the pieces of the puzzle that hold us back so much because obviously curiosity is, is the polar opposite of judgment right oh, so totally. the more you can do things with curiosity and be like do you know what I want to look into this I want to see how I can make this work for me but my main thing is for people to understand that it is changeable who you are now isn't who you have to be next year next month next week tomorrow you can mm. change all of this and one of the thing I see so often is people beating themselves up for the way they feel and we've been taught to kind of suppress these emotions which let's be honest makes them stronger anyway mm -hmm. so it's having these whether you want to call them coping mechanisms whether you want to call them healing modalities whatever story you tell yourself about giving something new a go tell yourself it if it means you're going to give it a try yeah and and suppressing of the emotions is probably the most damaging thing of all it will come out in some way or another um, through physical illness, through um, skin eruptions, you know, just um, even acne can is a result of suppressed anger. Um, there is so many, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Louise Hay's work, but not just that, John Sarno, who um, he's got books on healing back pain, and he was an actual medical doctor, and he saw this massive link between the mind and the body. So suppression of emotions is an absolute no-no um, that's why it's really important to feel the feelings and if you are feeling bad feel it yeah you know process it and then let it go it's not like I'm just gonna because what most people tend to do is I'm feeling really anxious stressed where I'm just gonna numb it with a glass of wine and yep. binge on Netflix shopping and zone out shopping yeah. you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with those any of those things but don't do it to suppress what you're feeling um yeah that's the other thing I would you know is really important to add yeah. and I think it's just being conscious of the ways that you do these things the ways that you numb because most of us aren't mm. it's being able to look at the way you behave on a day-to-day -day basis with that curiosity and go hang on a minute like wh what's making me do this if you get if you go doom scrolling or if it's if, for me at shopping used to be a really bad one online shopping <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible oh, no. for it and these kind of lockdown times it's kind yeah. of quite it's quite easy isn't it <laughs> I mean Amazon and ASOS I, I, I mean do you need anything else <laughs> that would be funny you just open up the front door oh another package oh what did I order and it, 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 what, yeah, what it's that? Like, oh, okay. that thing I ordered at one o'clock in the morning that I forgot all about <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's but it's just being conscious to these things and being able to name our feelings and I mm. say that similar to you like sometimes you, you just want to I, I would call it sushi rolling into the duvet sometimes Ooh, you like that. want to do that just mm. sushi roll into the duvet and shut the world out for a minute or two yeah. you know and if if that lasts a day it's that's okay totally. sometimes we need that sometimes that mood can be our body's way of saying hey you're heading for burnout you need to chill the mm. f out you need to do something that means you do nothing and often that's one of the the little known things about procrastination that i'm always trying to highlight to people as well sometimes procrastination is actually your body's way of saying you need a rest mm. but all of these things it's knowing the difference and getting get to getting stuck in it and knowing you have the tools to get out and i think eft is a really really great tool to have in your toolbox it's it's just so it's easy to learn it's you know once you become familiar with it and you become comfortable with the language you know I've got a ton of tapping videos on my YouTube channel so that's a great place you know to go and start if you just want to explore I think I've got a tapping video for a great start to the day it's just a great way to set yourself up for the day I've got a tapping video for a good night's sleep you know that will just help you you know have a good night's sleep that's a, been a really popular one yeah. the past few months when people are kind of anxious 
and get to sleep. So, so yeah, there is literally, um, yeah, if we can just acknowledge the way we're feeling, and as you said just now, naming it, mm. and all our emotions are good, and that's the thing, there's nothing bad, because they're just telling us something. Mm. And if it's, it's telling us, it might be telling us we need to change something, that we may mm. need to make a big change in our life. And it's just, it's our response to that. So it's like, okay, I'm listening. I hear you now, boy. I'm hearing you. I'm going to make changes. Yeah, exactly. Always saying that. Mm. I've done so many episodes around not demonizing negative, in inverted commas, emotions, because they're all there for a reason. They're trying to tell you something. It's highlighting something to you. And I think that's really, Absolutely. really important to, to recognize. Mm. Yeah. Thank oh, you yeah. so much. <laughs> My yeah. pleasure. It's been <laughs> lovely. I love talking. I could literally talk about this all day long. And I think it's so important that we all, you know, whatever age you are, very little, to very old, you know, you know, you can shift your feelings in an instant. Yeah, exactly. Do you have any videos that I know there'll, there'll be some mums at home going, oh, you can use this for kids. Do you have any specific videos that help with, with children? Um. I did one at the start of the pandemic, actually, for helping children with their fears of, you know, the virus, because I think there's so much on the news and poor little kids, they must process things so differently when they hear snippets of the news, overheard conversations. So, um, yes, there is um, there is that one. Oh, actually, I did one with my daughter when she was about eight years old. Oh, it's the funniest. It's one, again, really popular, loads of views on my YouTube channel. But um, I started off the video filming upside down and um so we're literally no we're, we're on our sides then after oh okay oh I'm upside down. and at the time I just oh I just uploaded it to YouTube anyway I thought oh no one's gonna watch that I think I had about four subscribers at the time yeah. it's since turned out to be one of my most popular ones but because my daughter is so cute in it and she's so lovely we've just left it and the, yeah. and I've had people send me letters and emails to say you know, your daughter has helped my daughter so much and, oh, and it's actually helping children to have a good night's sleep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I keep, but now they're a bit older and they're, they're teenagers now. They're not quite as willing to um, <laughs> do them with me. But I'm, yeah, I've, I've, I've got this little kind of um, Google Doc of tapping videos I want to create, but there's mm. things like exam stress for children. Mm. Um, what I love about EFT now is that it's actually being more mainstream and yeah. there are some schools that are bringing in EFT practitioners to help kids with A-level stress. I think that's just insane. It's amazing. I love it. But yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, all sorts of videos. Awesome. We'll make sure that we link that up in the show notes for everybody watching, but thank you so much again. I could honestly talk all day about this <laughs> stuff all day, every day with a cup of tea. Yeah, um, thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, please do let people know where is best to find you um instagram facebook um um youtube my my sorry for facebook and instagram at i am melanie moore that's the best place to connect with me um but yeah do check out my youtube channel which is melanie moore eft love it and i think you've got a freebie for people as well haven't you i have well um I've got a mini course I created a while ago. It's called the Entrepreneur's Emotional Toolbox because as entrepreneurs, oh my gosh, we have a whole raft of limiting beliefs that um, can often keep mm-hmm. us stuck. So it's a mini course covering some of the um, limiting beliefs or, or the stories that entrepreneurs tell ourselves. And if we can kind of let go of these stories, it's just going to rewire our brain you know some stories that I think like you know I'm not where I I should be further along than this or I'm feeling you know a bit behind or I'm not good enough you know I compare myself to others you know comparisonitis is massive so um it's just a few tapping videos which um I've been I put into like a little entrepreneur file so yeah I hope and that will help with all the entrepreneurs out there because yeah it's really great for just telling ourselves a new story and it's just as simple as that yeah love it well i'll make sure everything is linked up in the show notes lovely thank you so much for having me fran it's been a pleasure thank you 
So if you've got value from this and you know in your gut that now is the time to step up and start rewiring your thinking and start changing things for yourself, then please do book in a free discovery call so we can work out what needs to happen to get you from where you're at right now to the action taking success you know you can be. If you want my eyes and ears on your problems, then I do work with people one on one and through the Proactive Pants program. You can find all the details to book in a call in the show notes, the link in my bio on Instagram and on my website, franexcel.com. So stop waiting for if and when and choose to change things now because you can. I am here to believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. And as always, I hope you found this helpful. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye.